Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with a non-fountain pen related video. So if you're one of my subscribers and you're not a computer geek as well as a fountain pen geek, you can switch away. I recently purchased a 2022 Mac Mini M1 to solve some of my video editing issues. My YouTube channel is called Inquiring Minds and I do fountain pen reviews. My home built Windows 10 PC, even though I tricked it out over the years to be very powerful, was struggling to edit the 4K video I'm now shooting on my iPhone 13 Pro. I did some research and found that the best bang for your computing and essentially video editing needs is the new Apple Mac Mini M1. The M1 chip in the Mac Mini M1 has an 8-core CPU and an 8-core GPU and its RAM memory is integrated on one chip. In other computers, these components are individual items attached to the motherboard. Avoiding the tech geek speak, this computer is hugely faster than my PC, especially where video editing is concerned. The Mac Mini M1 can be purchased with 8 or 16 gigabytes of RAM and a solid state hard drive from 256 gigabytes up to two terabytes in capacity. I chose the base model for $899 Canadian as I just wanted to use it for video editing and will be using a solid state external drive for storage. Considering a high-end video card that can handle 4K video editing on a PC costs more than $900 Canadian, this is a lot of computing power for your buck, especially if you already have the keyboards, mice, monitors, and external drives you need. So let's take a look at my unboxing of the Mac Mini M1 and how I found a solution to switch back and forth seamlessly between the Mac and my PC using the same monitor, keyboard, trackball, and drawing tablet, right now. So I just got back from the Apple Store with my new Mac Mini and a couple of accessories. So, let's dive in. Here are the accessories I got. I got a couple of USB to USB-A adapters and a Rocketfish HDMI cable. And here's the Mac. And this is the base model. Eight gigabytes of unified memory and a 256 gigabyte SSD drive. And the typical Apple vacuum sealed box. And there it is. A layer. Not very heavy. It feels like it's the weight of a, a MacBook. And the ports are covered with some tape. We'll peel that off. You see our ports, two USB A's, a headphone jack, HDMI, two Thunderbolt USB C, Ethernet, power, power button, and your fan vent. And it has your Apple folder. Mac Mini documentation in French as well. And your usual technical stuff. And a nice big silver sticker. I like that. And there's the power cord. And we'll see what we can create with this. Here's another add-on for my Mac Mini project. I had a difficult time trying to figure out how I was going to switch back and forth between my PC and my Mac for files, but basically using the same monitor, the same keyboard, and the same trackball. And my son came up with this brilliant solution. He found it on his Amazon on his phone and sent it to me right away, and I had it in a day. It's an HDMI KVM switch, uh, and well, I'll show you what it does. And user manual, warranty card, Oh, it's a lot smaller than I expected. That's good. Oh, lots of cables. Here's the front. It has four USB 2 ports. 
and a switch for switching between the first PC and the second PC. Of course, it can be a Mac. And here are the ports in the back. It has the HDMI out, so that goes to my display, my monitor. And then it has PC1 and PC2, an HDMI and a USB each. That should work perfectly. Here's my new computer workspace. Setting up the Mac Mini M1 was a little tricky as it only recognizes Apple Magic keyboards, mice, and or trackpads during setup. Since I only have Logitech and Kensington devices, that wouldn't work for me, so I had to use a USB wired keyboard. But once I used the wired keyboards, tab, space, and enter keys, the setup was fairly easy to use the on-screen instructions. Once you have the computer running, you can add your Bluetooth and wireless devices. With the Mac Mini M1 setup and DaVinci Resolve 17 installed, now I just needed to be able to move my videos from my iPhone 13 Pro to the Mac and be able to share files between my Mac and my PC. The transfer from my iPhone to the Mac is dead simple. Just having Bluetooth turned on in both the Mac and the iPhone, I can share photos and videos to the Mac by selecting them and choosing AirDrop and my Mac as the destination. Now I need to share my devices and files between my PC and Mac. That's a little less simple, but easy once the setup is complete. I have my Mac Mini sitting here in this cool aluminum stand beside my Acer 41 inch curved monitor. And here is my P-Way KVM switch, which stands for keyboard, video, and mouse. I have HDMI and USB 2 running through both PCs and the Mac. It's important to remember that this is USB 2 only, so connecting to either computer via a USB 3 port will reduce that speed to USB 2. It's a good thing the Mac has two USB 3 ports and two Thunderbolt USB 4 ports. Plugged into the front of the switch, I have a USB dongle for my Logitech K750 solar keyboard. I'm sharing the wireless Kensington trackball with Bluetooth. So all I have to do is push this button on the front of the switch and I'm switched instantly to my PC. So now I'm sharing my monitor, keyboard, and trackball. How do I share files? Being on the same network makes it easy to move files back and forth between computers once you have them both configured. This is how I did it. My Mac is running Mac OS 12.1 Monterey. And on the Mac, go to System Preferences, then Sharing. In the menu on the left, select File Sharing. Click the Options button and check the box Share Files and Folders using SMB and select the account to share. Navigate back to System Preferences and select Network. In the menu on the left, select your active connection. Then select Advanced and select the Wins tab. Here you can select the Windows Work Group. Windows uses either Work Group or MS Home. If you don't know which, go to your Windows PC Control Panel, System and Security, and System. You should be able to see the Work Group name here. Click OK and Apply. Back on the Mac to share files, open a Finder window and click on Network in the left pane. You should see your Windows PC as part of the network. You probably need your Windows computer username and password to access the computer. Over on the PC in Windows 10, turn on file sharing by going to Settings, choose Network and Internet, choose Network and Sharing Center, select Change Advanced Sharing Settings, navigate to File and Printer Sharing, and click Turn on File and Printer Sharing and save changes. Then use the file navigator to select the drive or folder you want to share. Right click it and choose Properties. Then click the Sharing tab and turn on Sharing for that drive or folder. Now that everything you want is shared on the PC, type CMD into the search bar at the bottom beside the Start button and hit Enter. This will open a DOS-like command window. Type IPCONFIG at the prompt and press enter. Then copy down the IPv4 address. You'll need this on the Mac. Then type exit and enter to close the command prompt and go back to the Mac. Back on the Mac in the finder go menu, 
choose Connect to Server. In the address bar, type smb colon slash slash and then the address you wrote down from the PC and then click Connect. You should see all the drives and folders you specifically chose to share from the PC and you can drag and drop files from those drives to your folders on your Mac. Another quick way to share files across platforms is using SnapDrop. This is a free service. Simply go to snapdrop.net in a browser on both the Mac and the PC. The two computers, if they're connected to the same network, will immediately see each other with some cool code names. Click on the computer you wish to share with and then select the file you wish to send and click Open. Alternatively, you can just drag and drop files to the SnapDrop window and it works essentially the way AirDrop works. Then open the other computer and you'll see the files have been downloaded via your web browser to the location your browser downloads are pointed. With SnapDrop, I can seamlessly connect all my devices on the same network. My PC, my desktop PC, my Mac Mini, my PC laptop, and my Apple iPhone. I can even connect to my wife's iPhone, laptop, or desktop PC to share files, photos, or videos quickly and easily. I find this a really elegant and quick solution. In fact, I configure my Google Chrome browser to open with three tabs open automatically. My email, my YouTube dashboard, and SnapDrop. Just set Chrome so the tabs you want automatically are open, and then open your Chrome preferences, choose Start up on the left, and then click Open Specific Page or Set of Pages, and then click Use Current Pages. Now my video editing in DaVinci Resolve 17 is incredibly fast, even with multiple video tracks of 4K video. And I'm able to preview full HD video in my timeline, no proxy media required. When I think I was considering buying a whole new PC just for video editing and spending up to $2,000 to get that kind of editing horsepower, this Mac Mini M1 for less than $1,000 is an amazing bang for my computing buck. I'm very happy with this amazing computer and the fact I'll get to keep my PC too. The best of both worlds. So thanks for watching. I made this.